Okay, welcome everybody. We are just going to go ahead and start the camping adventure. <laughs> Hello, happy little campers, and welcome to Camp Pasco eSchool, home of Pasco County's only virtual elementary program. So, what can you expect to find here at Camp Pasco eSchool? Well, first, you'll be greeted by our wonderful camp counselors. As a ninja here at Camp eSchool, you'll have access to all our amazing cabins. Each cabin is stocked full of the tools and equipment that you'll need to be a successful camper. And, as if that's not enough, you'll be spending time taking part in all kinds of fantastic learning opportunities, like live lessons, cool projects, on-location learning, engineering, fun with math, project-based learning, field trips, engaging STEM lessons, and much, much more. So are you ready for the most fun you'll ever have? Are you ready to see what awesome looks like? Well then, happy little campers, let's get camping. Okay, so you can kind of see what we're all about right there. So if this is not the session you thought it was going to be, <laughs> no, we do have Pop-Tarts, s'mores Pop-Tarts, to support our little camping adventures here, so don't go anywhere. Um, we wanted to welcome you this morning. I'll do another brief uh, little introduction of who is kind of a part of this presentation with me. Sean Walker is joining us from Camp Pasco eSchool. And like he was introduced, he's a big integral role. He plays an integral role in our elementary program as well as our e-team, which is our technology team. Danielle Thompson was not able to be physically present here, but she's our family engagement specialist. So her main role is supporting students and families in the acquisition of online learning and navigating Canvas and orienting our families um, through the Canvas environment. I'm also joined by Paula Sanchez, who's right up here in the front. She is one of our course designers in the K-12 arena for our school. Um, and I'm very happy she's here with me to address some of the technical questions that may come up towards the end of the presentation. So we're representing Pasco eSchool, which is in Pasco County, Florida. We are a K-12 public virtual school. So we serve students full time that are strictly online, but we also serve students who take a more blended approach. So some of our elementary students may attend classes at their local brick and mortar school and choose to pursue some courses with us. So we certainly have a variety in what we offer. Our goal today is to take you on our journey with us. I wanted to explain how we have worked as an organization to design a comprehensive, integrated learning environment for our students using Canvas. Our students engage in authentic, rigorous, real-life learning every single day. Canvas helps make that possible for us. They work on computers and also issue, issued iPads. So several years ago, when we first launched as an elementary school, we found that we needed to engage in some action research and engage in some inquiry because ultimately what we were doing wasn't working. We needed to redefine our vision and find a way to move us forward into what our ultimate goals were for our program. We were a new school. We engaged in surveys with our parents. We studied and unpacked our standards. We looked at the alignment of our curriculum. And we gathered a lot of feedback from our teachers regarding the use of the current LMS that was being used. The bottom line was our completion rates in our elementary program were not necessarily equaling learning mastery. We knew we had to, had to make a big change across our program. So we saw a need and we decided to change things up and that's where Canvas comes in. It was the perfect place to start putting up the cabins or the classrooms in that environment and start creating those rigorous learning opportunities that were so important for our students and for our families and for ultimately what our teachers wanted. We know we needed to increase student engagement, student interaction. We knew we needed more face time with our students. 
we knew we needed increased parent involvement, increased parent communication. Canvas really provided a lot of answers for us in helping us meet our vision. They, it truly put our teachers, our team of elementary teachers, and our parents in the driver's seat. So here's kind of a glimpse as to what we offer as an, as an online elementary program, whether we're talking full-time or blended. We have a variety of courses. The best thing about it is that our LMS no longer dictates our student schedules. We're able to be so creative with the management of our courses, with, with the management of our content, with the management of our students. And that was a huge answer that we had been looking for. This was something that helped move us towards our vision of increasing student engagement, getting cross-curricular connections, creating real-life learning opportunities for our students. One of the great things that we love about Canvas is the flexibility that our teachers have. They're all professionals. They're amazing. We need to be able to let them customize and individualize their courses, but yet for the sake of our teeny tiny learners, we have some five-year-olds coming in <laughs> taking online courses, we knew we needed to also have consistency. We leveraged modular design, tried a variety of ways to make that happen for our students, but still allowed our teachers to customize, create their own theme, create their own format, and really make that classroom their own. So I'm gonna direct it over to Sean. Sean's going to tell you a little bit about how we leveraged modular design to store and manage our content. All right, so first, I wanna say I apologize for not being there in person, but I'm here in spirit. I've got my, my campfire keeping me warm, so we're good there. And I want to say thanks to Chrissy because we started out a, a whole team of us and then uh, she's the only one that was able to make it in person and she's been doing a great job keeping us connected. So that's really awesome. Um, so as, as, she, as Chrissy was saying, we, um, we had modular design. Um, we use the modules um, to, to build our cabins, if you will, to our courses, keep all the students engaged. As you can see on the, on the templates here that you have up now, um, you know, we were able to customize it a bit, but all of them have the same things as far as announcements and modules and, you know, the syllabus and stuff like that. You, you can find them all in the same places, even though the, the templates might look a little bit different. So it was nice to have that uniqueness, but also the same, same sort of format for our families and for our students as they're navigating. So if we go to the next slide, we can take a look at uh, modules and how we've used those um, to help us build our, our courses. So this picture shows, um, if you go back one one slide, Chrissy, I think, to the grade level one. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so it, it's showing um, what we currently have, which is grade level specific. So each module in our courses is um, a week's worth of work for like a third grade class or fourth grade class or even a kindergarten class. And it's it's divided into different subject areas. So Monday would have their ELA, um, their like language art stuff, and then their math, and then their theme. And they work through it. Um, through it day by day. Now we publish them all at like a week, two weeks ahead of time. So they can theoretically go in and do it at whatever pace they want. Um, we don't necessarily set requirements or anything like that, but it's, it gives them that layout for the parents and for the learning guides that are guiding the students through here that they can follow that day-to-day -day format and, um, and, and teach school that way. On the next slide, if we go to the next one, um, in the past we've experimented with different designs in our courses and we had, um, content specific courses. So we had ELA and STEAM courses. And there we still had that weekly weekly format, but we were, you know, only one subject at a time. So they didn't have to navigate through the, the ELA and then the, the math and all that. Um, so it's just kind of another example of how we've done that. On the next slide, we'll see even another example, which is on our PE courses. Um, and they, she does a really great job. She's an excellent PE teacher and she sets things up um, still in a weekly sort of format, but also by topic. So each week is a different topic that they're, they're tackling within their course. Um, so it's not necessarily divided out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. They have a week to go through it and to deal with that topic. And then they can go on from there. Um, if we go one more slide, we um, have our Another format that we've used, I think this is the Lego Robotics course, which this is more of an elective or a club. So the pacing wasn't as, as stringent, but again, these, these modules were just set up by topic and they worked through and once they got through one module, they can continue on to the next and so on and so forth. So it shows depending on the, on the course and what your, you know, the goals are for the students, you can definitely use those modules in different ways to deliver that content 
um, and to be a good fit for the student. Um, what's really cool, what we've done a lot this year, is that just because you pick that weekly format or that topic format doesn't mean you're stuck that way. And we've definitely changed things up um, midstream, if you will, to kind of to kind of meet our students' needs. So on the next slide, we have some project-based learning examples, I believe. Yeah. Um, so this is an example from my, my fourth grade class. And even though we were doing that weekly format day by day, you know, sometimes things arise where you would see the need for maybe a, some sort of project-based learning experience or a problem-based learning experience. And we could still design a module that was more self-paced. It still had those requirements, but they could go through it at their own pace and, um, and earn badges and, and awards and things like that to keep them, uh, keep them going and to still apply those skills that we had been learning in the weekly format. And now you're applying it to like a big, big project kind of thing that they can go through. Um, which was really cool and the kids had a lot of fun with it. So if we go to even the next slide, it sounds, sounds so formal on the next slide. Anyway, um, so you can see some of the results from this project-based learning. So these are some of the things that the kids were actually able to, to complete. In the middle, we have um, what was a build your own zoo kind of thing. And they were able to do their um, to use area and perimeter to actually design their zoo. And they submitted their blueprints and they got approval. Um, so it was still at their own pace and they were still applying those skills that we had learned when we were going through the weekly format, but they were doing it in a different way. Uh, that smiling kid with the detective hat on, that was our Florida Mysteries project. Um, I don't know about anybody else out there, a, a Carmen San Diego fan kind of based it on that. Um, so kids would get clues and then they would have to do an investigation log and they'd have to travel around the state of Florida to try to find this uh, Madame Mustache who had stolen the, the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. So but they were able to, to work through that module and keep track of where they're going and their hotel costs and their gas costs and things like that all within there. Um, Chrissy, if you wanna play that little video, you can kind of get an idea of what the, what the clue is or what they look like, it's kind of funny. Welcome to Who Done It Incorporated. Please follow me. This is our secret agent that trains <laughs> We can pause it there if you want. Detective um, Ivan, see you. Detective, I see you. What's really cool with this too, we, pair, we, um, we partnered up with the high school, um, high schoolers and they were able to make these clue videos for us that we could put right into Canvas, into those modules, and then they kind of worked through that way. So they got to flex their acting skills a little bit as well. So it was a, it was a lot of fun. Um, so that's just another example of how we made the, the modules work for us. We also did, Chrissy headed up a, um, a Genius Hour course where students, um, it was really self-guided and it was, you know, the modules, modules were built with the information that they need to kind of get them started. And then they just kind of posted stuff and built stuff as they went. So uh, Chrissy, if you wanted to show a couple or a little bit of that video. Star was designed based off of Google's initiative to allow their employees free time every week to pursue their own interests and engage in research. And we had a lot of academically successful students that needed something like that. Um, so we, we were able to use Canvas to leverage that, open up a shell, and run with it, um, and letting students do some self-guided inquiry um, and exploring their interests. Another example of research-based and project-based learning. Cool. Very cool. All right. Um, so the next slide, I realize I've been talking for like a long time already. Um, so I'll go, I'll go quick on this next one. So it's just another example of some of the things that have kind of come out of the different module based designs that we've had um, within Canvas. So, you know, we can leverage that to meet our students' needs. And whether you have one format or a variety of formats, you know, you're still getting the students what they need and they're able to, to go through the course in a way that makes sense for what they're doing. Um, so now that we've seen some of the, the results, some of the amazing stuff, we'll dive a little bit deeper into the different tools that Canvas had that really made this, this possible for us to achieve these great things with our students. So Chrissy, I'll let you take it away. So in, in thinking it through the lens of a course designer, we needed to think about how we wanted our students to interact with content, how we wanted them to engage, how we wanted them to navigate. Um, throughout each of our courses. So this is kind of a summary of, of part of the journey we took in terms of leveraging modular design in different ways and experimenting with that over time based on our needs and our students' schedules. 
how we um, then developed consistent templates and icons um, to support the consistency amongst our courses. You could see from that slide earlier, we offer several. We offer Spanish, we offer robotics, we offer computer class. Um, there's quite a, a wide gamut um, for the elementary level. And we needed to make sure students saw different types of coding and could navigate amongst courses with ease. Like I said, some of our youngest learners um, were interacting with this. So how did we do that? We really utilized Canvas Commons. It was such a great place for us to collaborate and to share and to store our templates, our icons, our ideas, our lessons, so that everybody on the team had a place to go to be able to find content to pull into their um, class. It's fast, it has easy search options, and was, is really and continues to be something K-12 that we use a lot of um, for um, ensuring consistency across our courses. So our gear that we've used, um, obviously we have the three big features in Canvas, the assignments, the discussions, and the quizzes. Um, I'm going to throw it to Sean again where he can walk us through a couple more slides that kind of show how we've created engaging and interactive assignments, discussions, and quizzes in different ways uh, to meet the needs of the K-5 students. All right. So, um, yes, thank you. So, as Chrissy was saying, we were, you know, doing all these things. We had this wide variety of, of things we were teaching and trying to get across, but we wanted to make sure that we had some common consistency between them. So, when we were making assignments, we wanted to, to keep in mind, you know, make it standards-based, make it authentic learning experience, uh, make it personal, and give the, the learning guides and parents uh, a little bit of help as well, because they're guiding the, the students through this. Um, you know, we make it clear in our, when people are enrolling with us, that it's, it's not a student on their own all day kind of a thing. They have, to, they have to have somebody to help work them through certain sections at least, and there's, there's portions they could do on their own as well. Um, but anyway, here's an example of a, an assignment from a kindergarten or first grade class that has some of those things that we were, you know, we wanted to make sure that were pretty standard. So first off, it's, it's personal. There's some personal connections. The teacher is letting their voice be heard in there. Um, it gives the students the, the information they need to be successful at this, this assignment, things they might need to download, um, things they need to read or see, um, and it gives them videos that might help support their learning. And then you can see on the, the second picture there, it has a, a parent guide kind of a part at the end, and it kind of gives them like a script and some things to read and some things to go over while they're, you know, completing this assignment with their, with their student. So it hits on all of those things. And we also, you know, we have just aesthetically, we had the headers at the top and the different ways that parents could tell whether it was an assignment or discussion or a content page, things like that. We tried to keep that consistent across all of them as well. Um, if we go to the next slide, we have another example of an assignment. Um, and this one had a lot of information going on in there. So it had some examples of cause and effect and students were, were looking at cause and effect in different literary texts and then um, and discussing it by finding examples in the real world. So they were making that real life connection. It was an authentic learning experience. Um, they had some fun with it. Um, so if we want to look at one of those examples, I like the, the battle tops one in the middle, I think it is. You know, the, the, they had talked about cause and effect and he found an example in the real world. So this is really showing this video clip how this student had some choice in demonstrating that particular skill um, in Thank the you. real world. I lost sound on that clip. But he, he's narrating through there about how the launching of his little pieces, what caused that, what the effects are, and then he relates it to what he was reading and how he's able to demonstrate that skill. Right. And I'm glad you brought that up about, uh, about choice, Chrissy, because we did try to um, give them as much choice as possible on these assignments to, you know, there were some students that or as outspoken, so they would draw things or submit pictures. Um, but as the year went on, they became more comfortable with recording their voice or recording videos. And some really um, began to thrive in that. And we have, I think, a couple of future uh, YouTube stars in the making that are, uh, yeah. that are gonna be, be out there for you guys to see. So it's really cool. Um, so that's kind of assignments in a nutshell. If we wanna go to uh, the next slide about discussions. Um, discussions are huge. I'm sure you guys use them, see them all the time. Um, but what we wanted each discussion to be is, is let the students share and make it personal and make it fun. Um, but the big key thing is that they can get feedback not only from their instructors, but from, from each other, which was great. Um, it's functional because there's the options like having them uh, have to post before they can read other people's uh, posts and replies. 
uh, and allowing them to edit or delete. Um, so that's good on our end, on the back end of things. But in this, uh, in this example here is, is a vocabulary example. So it's from a fifth grade class and they were discussing different vocabulary words. And instead of just saying, you know, post a definition, they played a game of charades. So they had to pay, uh, post a, a clip of themselves acting out a vocabulary word. And then the other students had to guess what that vocabulary word was based on, on their little video. So they were able to go a little more in depth, only, you know, having to think about how to act it out, but also replying to one another. And they had those great conversations because of it. So you had that awesome interaction and they were using these media tools to do it. So discussions were, were great for that. Um, the next slide has some more examples about um, keeping it, keeping it personal because this was a personal, uh, you know, picture of a teacher and some reflection, reflecting that they did on an experience they had growing up as being part of sports. Um, but then they had to engage in critical thinking about thinking, um, you know, what, what is what is sportsmanship? What does that look like? Can you give me an example? So the students were, were sharing that and really engaging in that deep thought, but also being able to share with everybody in their class and get feedback and stuff like that. Um, and then the next slide, it has one more example of just a lot of the times when we use it in, in class, you know, if you're in a brick and mortar classroom and you have 20 students and you do a really awesome project or assignment, you want them to be able to share what they did, but timing wise, you might not have that ability to do that. But on, on here, they can post their work and it's out there for everybody to see and they can give everybody specific feedback. And we really, we really taught them how to do that and, and encourage them to do that. And, you know, they're all, they're all letting their voice be heard, which is awesome. So this was a water park, design a water park challenge. So they made a water park and they were able to share their marketing strategy that they came up with. And they even made little commercials um, promoting like why my park is the best and you should come spend your money at my park. Um, so they were able to, to share those commercials and have fun with it um, and enjoy it, but also put it out there for everybody to see. It wasn't just between them and the teacher. It was between them and their whole class. So they were able to give each other feedback and, um, and really, I think they shine a little bit more because of that, because they know it's not just, I'm just sending this to my teacher and they're seeing it and we're done. Um, they're, to putting it out there for everybody else to see, which is cool. Um, should we talk about quizzes? I heard um, Chrissy was telling me we learned some really cool stuff about quizzes at the, uh, at the conference today. So I'm hoping to get that info back too. Um, but on our, our quizzes, we use them a lot for, you know, you're getting great feedback about the students for their understanding and their comprehension. Um, and you can see in these examples that only, not only do we use multiple choice, but there's so many ways for the students to give their feedback. They can upload pictures, they can upload video, they can do different things. So you're seeing, they're, they're having to dig a little deeper to answer those questions than just picking, picking an option. Um, the one example, there's a video um, in a music class. Um, our music teacher, she posted some, some notes and the students not only had to read the notes, but they had to sing it back. So you can see how they're getting a little deeper in that question because of that. So Chrissy, if you wanna play that. So you can imagine if you were a music teacher, the challenges of teaching online. So a lot of the great features uh, that Canvas offers with the media tools is really beneficial. And the fact that she can utilize that in quizzes um, is great. So you can really see, see the understanding there and if they, if they get the concept. Go ahead, Chrissy. What are you saying? Oh, I just said it's super cute, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he's a good little singer, a good little singer. Yeah. Um, so, and then in, in math as well, like myself personally, I had used it to, you know, I'd give them a problem and say, you know, what was your answer? And then upload a picture of the, the solution that you have. So you can see in the middle example, there's just a picture that they were able to upload of their work and how they solved the problem. So that's pretty cool. So that's, that's quizzes and Chrissy, back to you. Thanks, Sean. So in addition to all of these wonderful features that are built into Canvas that we, all of us use every single day, we've also found a lot of great tools that help all of our little campers be successful and really um, show us unique ways that they can demonstrate mastery, demonstrate their performance. Um, so we wanted to take a couple of minutes to show you some of the integrations that we've um, really taken on in full force and have really helped us with moving towards our vision. All of our students have iPads that allow them to take their work everywhere, which is key for us. As I said in the beginning, our families wanted mobility. They wanted flexibility. That was a big part of our vision and making that happen. The Canvas app on the iPad is super user friendly. It allows our kids to kind of take it, import media on the fly, um, and, and be able to show us what they're doing in, in real time, essentially. 
Adobe Connect has been a game changer for us. It is a beautiful seamless integration into Canvas that we love. And as I mentioned earlier, interacting with our students um, synchronously, regularly, um, this makes that happen for us beautifully. It's a safe and secure way for our kids to get in our courses and interact with each other and interact with their instructors. It authenticates right through Canvas, so we know they're in a safe spot, um, and it even allows them access to their recorded um, sessions that you know maybe someone was sick and couldn't quite participate that day. But this is something that our elementary instructors honestly probably use daily to provide direct instruction for their students, and that has really changed the face of what we do and how we feel about determining progress monitoring, how our students are performing, um, and seeing what they can do right on the spot. I can show you a little clip as to what that looks like. What do you think, why do we cite text evidence? What do we need to do that pairs along with that evidence? You need to cite evidence from the text because it supports your opinion. Yes, it supports your answer, your opinion. Perfect, that's a great answer. So Mr. Walker has given <laughs> Great question up front kind of asking about the specifics of this. It is right in our Canvas course. Um, the students have the opportunity to open a video pod. Sometimes we encourage them to do that. It's a class of 20, we may not. But they have access to you know, showing themselves, seeing the instructors, um, microphone privileges, there's whiteboards, tons of features in there that really help us get to know our students and deliver the, the direct instruction. Nearpod and what was once Zaption are, are two other great third-party vendors that we've utilized and allows us to get an in-depth look at student performance. And both of these tools kind of offer like embedded quizzes and things like that within, integrates beautifully into Canvas and a great tool for us um, to meet that progress monitoring need. And I can show you an example of what that might look like. See how you move your screen around and you can look all around, right? Pretty cool, huh? What I want you to do is I want you to look around Egypt here and I want you to take a picture of as many angles as you can find, whether they're right angles or acute angles or obtuse angles, okay? So through Nearpod, the children are able to take their iPads, engage in almost like a virtual field trip, report back through Adobe Connect what they're seeing, so you can see the cross-curricular connections, the use of technology, um, and interact, interaction with um, their teacher, which happens to be Sean at that moment. Uh, Brain Pop and Myon are two other resources that we leverage a lot. They both integrate very nicely in that they can set right into the page in Canvas. And they provide our students just additional resources right at their fingertips for additional practice and to give our teachers something else when designing their courses and their curriculum. Myon is a digital library of sorts. It also offers quizzes um, and Brain Pop um, collection of videos to support standards-based instruction. So kind of in summary, Canvas has provided the platform for us to leverage all of these things in meeting our vision. We're able to create engaging content pages. We're still learning, but we're moving forward very quickly because of the ease of use and how things integrate so easily. We have definitely improved communication with parents in that they all have observer accounts. So they, we're, we, we walk them through setting their notifications and making sure they're seeing everything that we're seeing and the students seeing and they stay you know, a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder partner with their child. Um, we're able to make connections across all content areas. We can get privileges to each other's courses. We do a lot of planning in that respect um, to try to make connections. We have lots of evidence of positive outcomes for learning. We have increased school grades, increased state assessment scores, testimonials from parents, testimonials from our teachers. It's been an overall very positive experience over the last several years um, in our transition. Um, and using Canvas. Um, the last uh, slide is a QR code for you. If you have a QR reader, if you'd like to scan it on your way out. This is a public Canvas course that we generated that has copies of a lot of what you've seen in the presentation, has our contact information, and has some other ideas for templates and icons and things like that that we've used in our courses uh, to help give us some consistency in moving us forward. And if you do not have a QR reader, um, I put the course number there at the bottom. Is there any questions that we can answer for you? Yeah. That's okay. We can. Really? 
We can. Sure. The, the question was, can we put some of the project-based learning activities and modules and things like that up in common so that teachers can share them and manipulate them and use them for their course? We can certainly add them to this course as well. Thank you so much. Sure. Thanks for asking. We'll keep this kind of like a running tab. Um, as people get in contact with us, we'll keep adding to it. Yes. Um, I use Brain Talk a lot, but we have an account. Mm -hmm. So our kids have to log into it. So can you access Brain Pop through this? Sean, the, the question is about Brain Pop authentication. Can you address that? Um, yeah, we, we've had success um, adding it as an external tool to our modules. So um, they can go ahead and click on that video and it plays. It might ask them maybe the first time to log in with their BrainPop account and then it should authenticate every time um, through there. Um, but that's usually if you add in an external tool. If you like iframe it in a page or something like that, it'll probably have them um, log in every time to view that video. So we've done it both, both ways. Does that kind of make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Yes. Yes. The Canvas Commons. So the question, and correct me if I'm rephrasing it wrong, the question was about Canvas Commons and how we've kind of come together to use that. Is that the question? So we, we, we meet regularly as an elementary team. And once we decided on consistency for our icons and our templates and our overall module layouts, we, we share just as course designers, we kind of each have a tag for our own name and we share resources in there. So we kind of all know where to find each other's stuff by searching that way. Mm -hmm. Yes. She's our Adobe Connect queen. That's so funny. I think one of the reasons, obviously, was the fact that we were able to integrate it within uh, Canvas. And uh, but all of the possibilities. You saw just a few examples of what we were able to do. And I think uh, Adobe Connect allowed us uh, a lot more features, definitely, than the big, big blue button. Mm -hmm. It's very robust. The question was about why Adobe Connect over a big blue button. Yes, sir. Do they all have the same devices? They do. They do, for the most part. So one of our requirements as an elementary program, being virtual, is that they must have their own computer, machine, at home. Whatever that looks like. <laughs> but we provide issue iPads, and we use like AirWatch and AirPlay to manage them. Um, remotely. We do see our students regularly too. You saw in the opening video how they come into our offices and, and participate. So we handle some of that management when they come in, but they do all have at least um, equity in terms of devices with the use of the iPad. That's a great question. Yes. Yes, that's a great question. So the question was, um, how do the teachers coordinate kind of lesson planning and sharing and things like that? Do you have multiple teachers for grade levels? OK, so we're a little different in that respect in that we have a K-1 teacher, we have a 2-3 teacher, and we have a 4-5 teacher. We have Sean, who also does our blended students. So we have a little bit of a different configuration. Um, so they essentially handle their module development themselves with the support of like people like us, course designers and specialists and things like that. Um, but like I said, we do get together frequently regardless, um, K through five, PLCs and things like that. We have the common vision, but we don't have multiple teachers working on the same tasks, if that makes sense. We plan vertically and we plan across content areas. So like our music teacher, our PE teacher, our Spanish teacher will come and we'll kind of share what's happening and try to integrate that way. We have multiple courses. Yes, great question. Any other questions? I think that's a wrap. Thank you guys so much. Please come get a s'more. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you.